Hello and welcome back to the channel everybody and today I'm going to show you through Sky for Sim Pad a brand new add-on for Microsoft Flight Simulator that has just been launched and it basically allows you to have access to a ton of really useful information uh, at your fingertips via a little tablet add-on. Uh, now it's available right now, I'll put a link down in the description and for a launch uh, special they've got 20% off so go and check it out and a big thanks to Sebastian and the team over there at Sky for Sim for hooking me up with a copy so I can show you through some of the features. Now let me go ahead and bring it up here. Uh, there's a little bit of installation that you do need to do so make sure you follow the instructions to get this set up properly. There's a little program that runs in the background uh, when you are flying just to help this uh, app work so just be aware of that the other thing I want to mention straight up front is that this is compatible with virtual reality so if you've got a VR headset get into this it's going to give you heaps of really great information as you uh, get into your flight but here we go I've launched into sky for sim pad and I've gone straight into the map right here uh, so this is a moving map now uh, Sebastian's actually one of the guys that helped develop the neo pad for the neo fly add-on so you'll notice a few sort of similarities uh, when you look at this but essentially here goes you know the good old moving map uh, that allows you to track your flight as you progress uh, there are a few options here you can go ahead and change the look of the map there we go we've got the satellite image right there uh, we've got now like the nighttime night vision one uh, then another bare bones one uh, another version right there and then the final one right there so this is the default version here uh, you will see on the map that if you hover over airports they'll give you some basic information like the altitude of the airport and the runway or if we go into NZAR you can see you've got the uh, Unicom frequency altitude and the runways available right there the other thing you do is you can Grab the filter right here and uh, you can actually decide what you do and don't want to display on this particular map. So you can throw in VORs and MDBs if you want to. Points of interest will show on here. Uh, so there you go, there goes the WI, uh, I think that's a VOR right there. Uh, frequency 254. So it's a great little way to find out some uh, interesting information and useful information uh, for when you're flying along. So you can just bring this up, see what's uh, going on and, and grab that information. So you can zoom in and out using these buttons or you can just use your mouse wheel and it's nice and easy. So like I say, use the filters and decide what you want to add in there. Let me go to the main menu right here. So as you can see, the titles kind of are a bit self-explanatory. This is a really simple app, but really, really effective and useful. So let's go into the airports tab, and this is really fantastic. Anyone who's joined my stream, I'm always asking halfway through my flight, saying, oh, what's the weather doing at the destination airport? So let's go ahead and put in, say, Auckland NZAA, uh, go ahead and do that and it's going to give me a heap of really useful information and I'm always looking for this info when I'm flying so to have it at my fingertips without having to refer to a third party add-on uh, outside the game is great. Uh, so here you go, you've got the uh, the reading of the barrow uh, in both uh, hectopascals and inches. Uh, so 21 degrees at the moment, nice and warm, I can concur it is warm, warm in Auckland right here. We've got a 240 at 11 knot wind uh, and we've got uh, runways... Uh, the 05 right and 23 left runway. Uh, there goes the tower and ATIS frequency, and there goes a little bit of a map there of the aerodrome itself. So, as you can uh, see, some really useful information, some general information in there, giving you the identifier, uh, what sort of uh, fuel is available, tower frequency, blah, 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 all that sort of stuff, altitude. Uh, here goes the runways, a little bit more in depth information about the runway. So, if you've got to make an emergency landing, in a big airplane, you want to make sure it's long enough, you can have a look at that. It gives you uh, a bit of information that's going to help you there. Here goes uh, the communication uh, frequencies right there. Uh, the very important ILS information. So if you're looking to shoot in the ILS, here goes some basic information of those uh, ILSs that are available there. And then that final one it is the weather tab, and it gives you one of the basic METAR readouts, 240 at 11. Uh, 21 degrees, dew point 15th, Q and H, 1020, there you go. So that is absolutely tremendous at your fingertips. Like I say, it's within the sim here. You can pop it out and have it on a separate screen if you like, and you can actually have a web browser version of this too. Like I said earlier, if you're VR, throw it up here, you can work, it works in VR, which is bloody awesome. Let's grab and uh, take a look at some of these other tabs. So there goes the airport tab, which does have a, a bunch of information as you saw. Uh, and here goes the just the basic weather. So it's only going to show the weather, not that other information. So a consolidated weather report, local weather, 
Uh, it looks like it's not reading there right now for some reason, but it does have the um, ATIS and all that sort of stuff. Oh, here we go. It's come up. My, where I'm sitting right here, Win 240 at 11, uh, which matches the meter for Auckland, which is exactly where I'm sitting. Another cool feature, you can go in and create a flight plan, and then it's going to show the flight plan on your moving map. Uh, so let's say that I want to fly uh, from Auckland. So I do that, and I go set as departure. NZAA is now set as departure. And let's um, clear that and go N Z H N. Let's take a look at that. I'll set that as my arrival. And there we go. My flight plan is now set. Uh, you can press your stopwatch and away you go. It's going to chrono it up for you. Uh, you can go ahead and uh, create another flight plan if you want to. Or if you've got a PLN file, so you've created a flight plan in Microsoft Flight Simulator, uh, you can go ahead and uh, use that if you like. So load that in and away you go. So if now I go here and go into my map, you can see that my flight plan is set. And so you can obviously add in different waypoints and stuff like that if that's what you want to do. So nice and easy right there. Now here go some features that I really like. Documents. Now if you uh, don't have a Navigraph um, subscription, so you're not using a separate app for uh, charts and all that sort of stuff, you can upload your charts into here in PDF version and can refer to them while you're in the cockpit. Now one thing I actually did before too was I, there's two ways actually you can upload the documents. One you can just upload it from a local file and that's what I've done with the Piper Arrow manual right here or you can put it in a URL and it will download it from the internet. So let's just take a look here at the Arrow, uh, here goes the pilot manual right here, there you go, boom. So if I just go through and just randomly choose some pages here, page 15, and there you go. I can zoom in and I've now got my uh, information here. I've got the entire pilot manual sitting in the um, sitting within the app right here. And you can basically upload any PDF document you like. So if you're reading a book or doing whatever you want to do, throw it in there, away you go. Okay, as I said, the other way that you can uh, view PDF documents is downloading them straight from the internet. So let me just call this test document. Uh, and I've grabbed the link for uh, runway 23 left uh, SIDS. Uh, so I just put the link in there. I go download. It's thinking about life right here. Just wait for that. And there we go. We'll double click on test. And here we go. We've got the chart. So an easy way to have your charts display, you can do it as long as you've got the download link, or sorry, the link to the PDF on the internet, you can go ahead and download it straight into your uh, Sky for SIM pad right here, and you've got the information. There it is. Beautiful. Okay, then we've got the PDF viewer right there, so you can view the PDFs that you've got. Uh, we go into settings. You can change a bunch of different settings in here. Uh, shortcuts to bring up the, uh, the pad itself. Uh, you can change uh, to high contrast uh, options if you need to do that, so you can read it. Uh, you will need to update your nav data, so I'd recommend doing that. In fact, it prompts you to do it when you start the uh, sim, so that will upload that into there. Uh, here goes PDF. You can choose uh, quality versus size. Uh, so two, there's either 100, 200, or 300. 200 is a nice sort of balance, but if you want higher resolution, you can up that amount right there. API, you're going to need a Bing API and another one which I've completely forgotten, uh, but it's in the instructions, and that's going to help you out. Uh, and you can go ahead and reset the pad if you need to. But there we go, ladies and gentlemen. It's also, by the way, got a comprehensive uh, help section to help you with absolutely everything here. It's very easy uh, to um, to get your head around this uh, add-on. But there you go. I reckon this is a must-have add-on for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Check out the link down in the description. If you're new, how about consider subscribing? Uh, and if you did enjoy this video, smash that like button down below. And until next time, everybody, take it easy.